You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 30th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we once again wish to apologize for Rodney Davis. He's not Madison Cawthorn, but he is a stain on the honor of Illinois that we're trying hard to correct. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. You know, we're going to start off with just a little bit. Uh-huh. Of Bible bitch. I think that's great. I have missed Bible bitch so very much. I mean, I sleep right next to her and she's amazing, but <laughs> I don't get the full, uh, full New Testament, Old Testament thing. Except this, as we want to make very clear to our many atheist friends who are now reaching for their volume control, go, nope, 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 nope. This is not evangelizing. Oh, this no. Is, this is just some amazing stuff that we pick up during our day, which does include church. Yeah. And, uh, Bible bitch believes that God loves atheists best. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you atheists will get into heaven before I will. Oh yeah, because uh, <laughs> you're the, the you're the kids that grew up, got a real job, moved away from the house. Yeah. Well, what they say? Don't need the carrot or stick of the church, right? <laughs> right. They don't need the carrot or the stick of religion to be good and honest and true. So that's right. So way to go. Good for them. Right. But yes, on Wednesday, uh, as we do every morning. We got up and watched uh, on YouTube the morning prayer service from Canterbury Cathedral. Mm -hmm. And Dean Robert Willis uh, is usually there with cats or chickens or on Saturday it's pigs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Every Saturday he Uh has church with the pigs. And don't leave leave out the other fowl when you mention chickens because. Oh, well, yeah, the duck and there's turkeys named um, Darcy and Lizzie. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a three-legged cat named Tiger, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's just charming. It and, is charming, and it's also a way for us to get a very uh, little bit of inspiration, religious inspiration for us mm-hmm. uh, first thing in the morning before we start our day. And he does a little bit of history too on this. He does on and... this day stuff, yeah. right? And it, be, it being Canterbury, he'll talk about. 671 and yeah. that person died and he's buried here in the cathedral and we know exactly where his bones are and you're like okay you by know way, english if, history if, by the way since since the, the good dean is not going to be listening to us we it is very clear that dean has a partner uh-huh. who films everything <laughs> yeah. um and has traveled with his partner all around the world so we get a lot of history of show tunes oh and, we and do history of he's really into musicals yeah yeah <laughs> So, he really is, yes. And, and he is as, as as English as they come. He is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the important thing on Wednesday when we watch this, uh, what he does is he starts with the collect and does, you know, the, the things from the Book of Common Prayer. Then he reads a psalm as, as this is the morning prayer service. You read a psalm and you read a passage from the Gospels and then you talk about a little bit about it and then you do on this day and say the Lord's Prayer and you're done. That's it. It's thir- It's 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And the animals are charming, and it's always outdoors unless it's horrible weather. Um, and then he does it from a greenhouse. So it's really, he calls it the garden congregation, and it really is. And you can watch it on YouTube. It's, it's, we love it. But uh, Wednesday, he started off by saying, you know, and he's been celebrating all the English wins in the Olympics mm-hmm. this week. Yeah. Um, he started off by saying, I could talk about the Olympics, but what I really want to talk about is the horror that we all experienced yesterday, Tuesday, mm-hmm. as police officers testified in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. to the horror of January 6th. And he went on about it and how much we should honor our police officers who are were protecting uh, legislators and senators and a free and fair election. And, I mean, and he democracy, just, yeah. And democracy yeah. and mm-hmm. how the great nations, uh, democracy is very important, that great nations and certainly the United States is among the greatest of nations. And we all look to the United States for leadership. And I mean, he just went on. Yeah. And it was, it was 
quite humbling to hear that people around the world are watching this. You know, this literally is, around the world. This yeah. is a section where sometimes he will direct his viewers' attention to floods in right. Germany or fires oh, he does. in and, Canada, and and the the coups in Myanmar. I mean, he right. he he really is aware of what's going on around the world and the tragedies and triumphs and and praying for the world every day and mm-hmm. looking for racial equality. And I mean, he's on the right side of history with this stuff, but yeah, so he, he spent his introduction to Wednesday talking about these four police officers testifying before Congress. Talking about the the hearings in January 6th. Yes. And how the the whole world is horror. It was horror to hear this, but they're very brave and wonderful and, and we support them and, and, and on and on. And then um, he has been reading through, in order, the Gospel of Matthew. Mm-hmm. And he's done the Gospel. He's done all the Gospels. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's done them. But but so you know what to expect. You know right. on Wednesday, unless it's the Feast of Mary Magdalene, which it was last week, um, you know that if it's not a special feast day, he's, okay, today he's going to be in Matthew chapter 27 right. or we'll whatever. You know off. exactly which section because the next day he'll just pick up right where he left off yeah. and read five or six more verses from Matthew. Right. And what he read on Wednesday was Pontius Pilate washing his hands in front of the mob and mm-hmm. saying, I'm not going to be responsible for crucifying Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Before turning him over to the mob. We're going to turn him over to the mob. The mob is in charge. And I mm-hmm. wash my hands of the whole thing and I'm not taking responsibility. Yeah. Now, now, mind you, <laughs> everyone knows how the story ends who, who's read, who's been to Sunday school. Yeah. But right. you could not have timed it to land on that date. No. Absolutely because you would not. have to start three weeks earlier and know exactly when. Or a month and a half earlier. Yeah. I mean, he's been yeah. reading Matthew since the beginning of the summer. Right. Yeah. So, but it was just like jaw droppingly perfect. It was, you're reading about Kevin McCarthy for God's right. sakes. Yes. <laughs> you're reading about Donald Trump. This is insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there was but, no yeah. raising of the eyebrow, like, you know, guess what I'm subtweeting? It wasn't his no, hot take. No, because on... it wasn't, it was pure coincidence. I mean, right. and, and of course, he would probably say there are no coincidences mm-hmm. when you're reading scripture, but right. uh, to, re- to realize that. And and I love it when we realize that everything that's old is new again, that yes. these things happen mm-hmm. over and over again with corrupt governments. And it is up to we, the people mm-hmm. to triumph. And and, you know, this this bureaucrat. Yes. Pontius Pilate was just a bureaucrat. Another fucking bureaucrat. Trying to get right. through the day. Well, and, and, and the he- fucking mob wants you to save Barabbas. Uh-huh. The thief and murderer, and crucified Jesus, and I can't find a damn thing wrong with there anything this guy's done that's illegal. But you know, but the mob's screaming, and it's going to create a huge headache for me if I don't do what the mob says. And, so, and, and the reason that this is the moment when the Jewish authorities mm-hmm. and the Roman authorities are in complete agreement that yeah. what we need to do is get this guy the hell out of the way. Cover it up and move on. We got to move yeah. on because yeah. if it, this is feast day, this is this is taking place during Passover. We yeah. got to get and this shit done and out of the way because the city is crowded, full right. of people who could really cause us problems. And that was the other. That was the thing he said today. Because here today he's reading about, you know, they're getting him to the cross right. and they're doing it in three days, and that's fast. Mm-hmm. They're not putting him in jail like they did. Remember, they Paul was in jail forever, you mm-hmm. know, just forever. We put him in jail. We moved him to Rome. We did that. It's, uh, it's bureaucratic again, bureaucratic, but there's a process. No, it was, we're, we're going to crucify him. Bam. Let's do it. Crucified, because, bury it, done before done. the sun goes down. Uh, yep. And and we don't want anyone to know where he is. Right. And <laughs> we're, we're done. <laughs> and all this will blow over. No one will talk about Jesus exactly. ever again because hot, there'll be different hot takes tomorrow. Hot there'll takes be, uh, tomorrow. Chris maybe, Eliza will have something else completely different right. to talk about. Well, you know, <laughs> the Romans were big into infrastructure. I don't know if you knew this, Blue Gal. Oh, maybe Romans it was infrastructure were week. All Romans. So, you know, if we get this shit out of the way, we can move on to the mm-hmm. important business of running an empire. 
Yeah. And that's not how it turned out. But it was such, it was so striking that you and I looked at each other and said, oh, no, no, this is going in the podcast. This is podcastable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, now we're in central Illinois. We are. Uh, Hey, everybody. I just want to say hi, everybody again. It's so good to talk to you guys. Hello to all the, especially all, not not just the atheists, because, you know, we love you, but all the blue dots and red states out there who. uh, We talk to you every week. mm -hmm. And. you want to talk a little bit about some things that happen in central Illinois. I do. Among the locals. Among the locals. Um, First of well, all, you saw a major league Trump hat again this year. I did. Year, Trump hat spotting in the pet store. There's there's all this, um, as you might know, if you listen to the news, if you listen to the dumb news, all, a lot of hand wringing about listening to the the right. We have to listen to the, the anti-vaxxers. We have to listen to the wing nuts. We have to understand what makes them. And as I said last week, and I'm sure I've said a thousand times, we we've been listening to them. We can't stop listening to them. They're they're vomiting their bullshit out of all the radios in central Illinois all the time and across the country all the time for decades. We they're not shy about letting you know what they think. They will walk up to me, people who know me, and buttonhole me on the street during the Obama years to just start in the middle of a conversation about that's what Obama just did. So they're not shy at all. And so I'm in the pet store picking up stuff for the cats, like I do, the internet kitties, like I do. And there's this asshole in there wearing his his Trump hat that says, I believe, bidet instead of Biden, Harridan instead of Harris, um, make America effed up again. And he's just wearing it as proud as he can be. Just like the old guy who was who was marching uh, into the hospital as I was marching out, mm-hmm. um, wearing his his MAGA hat. And um, his Trump shirt. He had both shirt. on. Yeah. These are, and y- you can go around town, you can see the bumper stickers we talked about uh, last week. When we what we saw when we were driving around, um, the the Q shit, they're not shy about this. This is not a secret that's going on in the Midwest. The only reason it seems secret is because most of the media is located in New York and DC and they never fucking leave. So when this stuff breaks through to them, it's a shock uh, that you know that liberals have been saying this, especially those of us who live, you know, somewhere other than the coast, have been saying this forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so we live here in central Illinois. And we're looking down the barrel of another mask mandate, which we will gladly abide by. And we're already sort of doing when we're out in public, when we're, when we're with people, because um, that's who we are. Of course, we're going to abide by health regulations. Of course, we're going to play it safe because we care about our neighbors and our community and our family. Um, and we're also looking at chaos as the school year starts if we can't get the Delta variant under control. And all of this is due to the unvaccinated human plague vectors on the right. People who've signed up to become human bioweapons just to own the libs and kneecap the Biden presidency. It doesn't matter if they go to the hospital. It doesn't matter if they die. As long as they can own the libs, they'll die happy. And the stories we are reading in our local paper uh, and the few anti-vaxxers who are getting vaccinated will in no way surprise any of you. Um, now, in Sangamon County, where we live, Slightly less than half the residents, eligible residents, are vaccinated. And according to the health department, nurse D. Kirby, we're seeing a lot of resistance. Uh, we know you are, D, and we're really sorry. For example, there's a local idiot named Karen Luperell. Uh, Yes, she is a Karen, and she is a retired state worker, and she's quoted by name, full name, in the local paper, so I don't feel bad about calling her out here. Uh, she says she stopped watching TV news during the pandemic because the messages were so confusing and she doesn't read the newspapers. So Karen is aware, unaware, apparently, that 98 or 99 percent of all the people now has- hospitalized or dying of COVID are the unvaccinated. And she's unaware of scientific progress and how thoroughly scientists have been studying coronaviruses for, for a long, long time, which is how you can develop the vaccine so fast and all the other shit that everyone listening to the show already knows. But Karen is also very, very familiar with every wingnut rumor and conspiracy theory. Isn't that weird how you can not watch TV but still know everything that's going on in Fox News? <laughs> um, she, she, she's tight with the wildly exaggerated stories of dangerous vaccine side effects. And, of course, she is sure that the 2020 election was rigged and that Joe Biden is not really the president. Well, we know exactly which Facebook pages she's looking yeah. at. I mean, come on. So, so she's getting her news from somewhere. From Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Well, And once the inconvenient facts, as as they do happen to do eventually, 
began leaking into her Fox News bubble. She just stopped listening. Mm -hmm. Now, the good news for Karen is that she has a 37-year-old son who's getting married and told her she could not come to his wedding if she didn't get vaccinated. Good for him. And she said in the paper, sort of tearfully, as they described her, um, smiling like, you know, sadly, that her choice was taken away from her. <laughs> so She very, couldn't be loyal to Trump because she wanted to go to her son's wedding. Yeah. That's and what well, this was about. And the subtext is her family would have nothing to do with her if she yeah. didn't get her shot. So yeah. very reluctantly, she got her shot and good for her. There's another story in the same article about a man with so many underlying health problems that although he hates big government, he not only got his shot, but he thinks the government should mandate it for everyone. <laughs> You know, when it's you, when it's you who are at risk, you personally, suddenly big government forcing people to get shots is an excellent idea. Um, and then there's another couple whose school aged child will no longer have an at home learning option, which means their son could very easily become infected and bring the virus home. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, and the wife is vaccinated. Now the husband is like, oh, okay, okay, I'll get my shot. And then all these stories have the same moral which is we've reached the point where only enormous pressure and or self-interest are going to get these people to take their shots. And that is entirely the fault of Fox News and hate radio and the Republican Party. All right, Dirk, I have stop. a question for you. Sure. Did you hear the voicemail that was left for the officer who got had a heart attack? Officer I did. Fanon? Okay, I you heard did. it. Yes. I didn't know whether you'd heard it or not. Was there a yep. single word in that voicemail that came as a surprise to you? Not at all. Not no. one. Um, I wasn't shocked. I wasn't appalled. I wasn't even, no. I didn't have any emotional reaction to that, no. except I was surprised they put the whole thing on TV. Yes. Well, it's, it's in evidence now. And now it's, it's in legit because it's in evidence because it's yeah. in evidence in the hearing. Yeah. But it was, no, it wasn't shocking to me at all. Yeah. Here's, here's, the, here's the deep, terrible secret that mm -hmm. we liberals harbor out here in, <laughs> in the wilds of Republican <laughs> land. None of this shit is surprising nope. to us. Nope. None of it. None of what, none of the rise of Donald Trump shocked us. The nomination of Donald Trump shocked us. The election of Donald Trump was, was terrifying and awful, but in the end, it, it wasn't that surprising. Um, it wasn't not, surprising to me that people, that young men voted for him as a joke. Exactly. Exactly. And people and that's thought, how well, he won Michigan. Fuck. Yeah. It, it, that it didn't surprise me a bit. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me that after four years of sedition and death and destruction and ruin, he got more votes than he got last time. Uh, none of this surprises because we have been actually, unlike the all of your never Trump friends, all of the people that you listen to on television or watch on TV, all the reporters from the mainstream media, we actually have been paying attention to what the Republican Party has been up to for decades. Yeah, and watching as this horrifying thing got bigger and stronger and danger more dangerous and more toxic and more deeply rooted, and how the mainstream press ran away from it every time, mm -hmm. didn't want to talk mm -hmm. about it every time, mm -hmm. talked shit about people who did talk about it, which is why you never see a liberal in the uh, in the mainstream media talking yeah. the truth. But the whole dynamic that made Trump possible and and his rea inevitable reaction to this pandemic possible, we've been seeing growing for decades. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I do have to give credit to George Conway. Yeah. On one on one tweet he did this week, because after that voicemail came out, George Conway said, what do you mean? That guy's going to be on the 2024 RNC platform committee. <laughs> of course he is. And he is. He will be running the party. Mm -hmm. He'll be on the floor of the convention mm -hmm. screaming, and you know, purple band-aids. We've seen these guys already. Purple band-aids with Bush. Right. Shouting and screaming, lock her up. Yeah. Not caring. Extrajudicial imprisonment of our opponent. Right. I mean, this is what these the Republican base is. So, uh, they're the dear leader of this mob, the Republican mob, had a very bad week drift last. Did you he know did. that he's put a helicopter up for sale? He this has. Afternoon? Yeah, wow. he's selling think, one of his helicopters. I think I saw that in the Easter eggs in Loki. Yeah. Um, the Trump copter <laughs> was like selling his helicopter. Yeah. No, no, the, the, in the in the in the ruins of the oh. place they go. I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, there's there's a, a famous cartoon copter and the Trump copter, I think, was there. But I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't I think could have been so. Wrong. No. <laughs> First of all, I think they really are losing the propaganda war on January 6th. The yeah. whole oh. committee, the hearing. I mean, time will tell how the, this unfolds. I I agree 
with the commenters who said it was a mistake not to put those four officers on in prime time. Yes, that was but, a mistake. But, you know, it it was uh, nevertheless very gripping television. And it's it's kind of Benghazi syndrome. I also hate to make that comparison, but the uh-huh. press has dramatic video that they can run over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And this time it's not Fox News running Benghazi video no. of the building on fire. It's our fellow citizens over and over and over again with video that they made being entered into evidence against right. them. Well, and this is not th- this always gets me to the question of who is there left to convince of anything? Oh, I know. Yeah. I know, but, but I, 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 the general I think point the Washington I agree. press corps has had it with denialism from Kevin McCarthy, and certainly the Speaker of the House has had it. She called him a moron and said, don't ask me any questions because you are literally wasting my time anytime you ask me a question yeah. about the, Dem- the Republican leader in the House is a waste of my time. Um, two other losses for Trump this week. Um there was a runoff for the Texas Six House race, which in which a congressman died. His widow and another woman were running for this race. The widow, Trump endorsed the widow, and the other woman won. Yeah, um, they're both terrible. Just Wonk, so we're clear, yeah, both Republicans. But Wonkett said Trump advisors are reportedly very super mad at the Club for Growth <laughs> for steering Trump toward endorsing a non-winner. Yeah, no, <laughs> they no. wouldn't say loser. And Trump said, and we actually won because it's a Republican who's the nominee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, this is <laughs> this this depraved old man yeah. um, who's so deep in debt. He he's selling off his helicopters. Yeah. Um doesn't know how to do anything but slap his name on things and claim credit for it. Well, and there's the last story. Today yeah. in federal court or yesterday, excuse me, in federal court, mm-hmm. three to zero, the judges voted against Trump's motion. His I don't know who's attorney i don't know what the attorney is in this case um there's a multi-level marketing company in during the time that trump was running the apprentice and and the celebrity apprentice called acn going out and selling phones or something but it's multi-level marketing Uh uh-huh and Trump did videos and went to their business conferences and said, this is a great company. It's a great investment. You need to join in. You need to work from home and make a, make your own sure. million dollars, et cetera. And of course, Trump was being paid. <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> and Trump's kids were being paid. Of course they To were. go to these conferences and say that this company was awesome. Right. Um, so now there are people who feel that they were uh, snookered or taken by this multi-level marketing company who mm-hmm. are suing. They are suing Trump and they are suing ACN. <laughs> oh, no. And, be, but ACN went to, to those people who invested in them. They signed a binding arbitration agreement. So the people that are suing ACN have to go into binding arbitration if they're unhappy with ACN. Mm -hmm. So Donald Trump said, well, there's binding arbitration in the ACN pie, so we get binding arbitration too. And the judges, three to nothing, said, did you sign a binding arbitration agreement? No. (laughs) Well then. (laughs) And the answer is, no, you don't get binding arbitration. It's got to go to a jury. And then he said... I'm going to get Bill Barr to, oh, that's right. I lost. <laughs> Oopsie. So three to nothing, the judges were, uh, apparently they didn't take a lot of deliberation about it either. No. The, one of those things where you see the jury march in one door and out the uh, out one yeah. door in the other, <laughs> in the, other in the same hot take. It was only yeah. three judges. It's yeah. a panel. But still, yeah. it didn't take them a lot of time to ask one question. They only needed to ask one question. Did you sign a binding arbitration agreement? No. <laughs> Can I do it now? No. No. <clears throat> well, and there was also a bad... Oh, oh excuse me. Let me just add uh-huh. that in addition to that, Donald Trump had ACN on The Celebrity Apprentice <laughs> twice. <laughs> you know, commit your crimes so, in public, man. Do yeah. it right out in public. <laughs> right out in public. There's vid- There's ample video evidence mm-hmm. of uh, of this. And, and so now they're going to have... Uh, 
Discovery, and they're going to get the Apprentice tapes. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's time to leave the country. It's time, <laughs> time to find a non-extradition country and use, oh, that's right, you have no money. Well, okay. <laughs> Maybe you can endorse some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also I wanted to mention in, in, just because you you mentioned Texas the uh, the heir to the mighty Bush dynasty. Oh yeah. Uh, also had a very bad week in Texas because he, he sucked up to Trump so hard he he abandoned his family. He Trump just shit all over his daddy Jeb and George P. Bush has stood there smiling that big shit eating grin and taking it and taking it and taking it right up the rear and then Trump dumped him. Yep. And people were just um, especially on certain. Um, Oh, let's call it uh, Never Trump podcast. <laughs> uh, we're just like oh, I've never seen a, a this, my God. It was George, Bush is Bush got screwed. I mean, I've never seen such a turnaround. Like, like, dude, have you just been introduced to the Bush family yesterday? Seriously. Um, the reason George H. W. Bush joined up for a full hitch in World War II, yes, is because his daddy was a Nazi. Yeah, <laughs> and there was no political future for him. So he had to sort of okay, Dad. I got this. Shut up and go over there. The reason George H.W. Bush got to be vice president is because originally he called Reagan crazy and called his oh, his yeah. trickle down voodoo economics. Voodoo economics, And, and yeah. thought he was the stupidest guy he'd ever seen. And then he won. And suddenly George H.W. Bush wants to be vice president very much. Thank you. Please, please, please. And he spent eight years sucking up to a guy that he despised. Uh, I believe the story goes he hired a joke writer to write a new joke every day. So he'd go and say, hey, boss, and tell him a joke, because that's how you suck up to him. So the Bush family has a long and filthy tradition of sucking up to people in power, mm -hmm. regardless of how it makes them look, regardless of, of their, their alleged principles, uh, to advance their career. So I'm not sure if Jeb isn't proud of George P. Bush for fa following the family tradition of finding someone you absolutely despise who's on the rise, and sucking up to them regardless of what it does to your family or reputation. Because right. that's how Bush has got to be where they are now. All right. Well, we got to talk about Mitch McConnell for a minute. Because yeah. things are things are really moving quickly in Mitch McConnell's world. Yeah. Uh, he agreed to vote for the advancement of the discussion on the bipartisan infrastructure yeah. bill. Yeah. Uh, he is using his campaign money to run pro-vaccine public service announcements on the radio in, in Kentucky. What? And as you put in our notes, uh, it appears that he's reading the polls and the insurance morbidity charts. Yes, he is. Oh, my God. And perhaps uh, his party's morbidity charts. Yeah. Mitch, uh, our people are uh, actually uh, going to be dying off at a rate that we can't cheat our way out of. So maybe we should get them vaccinated. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh oh, yeah. okay. Because you because here's the here's the open secret, from Tucker Carlson to Mitch McConnell, all, up and down the up and down the uh, the spectrum of people who have actual influence in the GOP. They hate their base. Mm -hmm. They hate oh, yeah. that they depend on the they scum think of the idiots. earth. They Absolutely. think they're idiots. Yeah. And and I I swear there is some something going some sort of I don't know. There, there's a long German perverse polysyllabic word for people who take delight in convincing other people to kill themselves. <laughs> and yes. that's what, and that's what they're doing. They're like, and Tucker Carlson is like, I wonder how many of these idiots I can convince to step in front of a bus tonight. Mm -hmm. And there's some mm -hmm. weird pleasure they're getting out of killing their own supporters or, or, or endangering their lives. And, but Mitch McConnell is not just interested in ratings. He's interested in his party's future. And to mm -hmm. do that, he has to do shit like sign on for an infrastructure bill. And tell people, you know, you really should get vaccinated because if not, you're going to die or you're going to be real, real sick and you're probably going to blame me and I don't want that. So and and that on off switch you can flip in the brains of Republicans to make them forget shit stops working when you're you, when your dad's been in the hospital for 10 weeks. Yeah. And and here's another little secret. Mm -hmm. Since we have had trickle down economics and Reaganomics for 40 years. There is not a single congressional district in the United States of America that does not have a road or a bridge that is a disaster. Yes. Well, you clapped back to uh, Jennifer Rubin today, didn't you? I on did. On Twitter, yes. I did. I said, she said, uh, he, Biden is growing the government larger than at any time since the New Deal. Right. And I said, he's not growing the government. 
he's reinvesting lost investments that have been denied Main Street for 40 years. Right. By your party. By your party. Uh-huh. And he is simply rebuilding <laughs> the country back to what it was before. You know, it, the way I look at it, Biden is is trying to bring the country back, the country's economy back to the 1950s without the racism. Yeah, exactly. And you don't realize people think the 1950s was General Motors. It was investment in interstate highways that allowed General Motors right. to be to have, so successful. That's exactly right. Yep. And and it's government spending that got us out of the De- Great Depression. Yes. <laughs> and it's government spending on on engineers and scientists uh, through the GI Bill that got us the middle class. Right. Got us right. to the moon. Got uh, all the innovations you see before us. The the manufacturing base that the U.S. was the powerhouse mm-hmm. were, was funded by the GI Bill and union jobs. And, Two and things, building, building, and building things, and building things, but but all things that Republicans hate mm-hmm. deep in their hearts, they hate so much. They hate yeah. unions, and they hate spending money on people who aren't rich. And, and every white child in America in 1946 went to kindergarten in a new school. Well, except for Appalachia. Let's let's be let's well, be sure. Well, yeah, I mean, but you know that the uh, Tennessee Valley Authority dams yep. were still being built well into the 1950s. That, absolutely right. You're absolutely right about that. So this is not, this is government spending that that created that middle class. And if you can do it with an eye toward a multiracial democracy, I mean, we can really make this world a better place. We you're can just, do it. You're just a goddamn socialist, Blue Cow. I know. Just admit it. You want to spend money <laughs> <laughs> to help people make their lives better, that will result in a virtuous cycle of it prosperity really, and really, education. It really bugged me yesterday on Twitter. What I I don't have a dog in the race for the Pennsylvania right. Democratic Senate nomination. Yeah. Connor Lamb is going to announce, or if he hasn't already, and John Fetterman is announcing. I think they're both good candidates. Connor Lamb is going to have to answer why he doesn't want to legalize pot in Pennsylvania, yeah. but. Other than that, um, you know, they're both They'll do. Whatever, whatever. They'll Democrats, do. pick a guy. Let's do it. Let's win right. the seat. Right. <laughs> That's what I want to see happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will have to ask my dad what he thinks of those two. Yeah. Someone on Twitter saw an ad for John Fetterman and retweeted it and, and went socialist, Marxist, Marxist, socialist, you know, baby killing, blah, blah. And it was just the stream of. Yeah. Hannity words. Right. You know, she's, she is a pro- reprogrammable meatbag in Pennsylvania. Well, it, was, it was the Twitter equivalent of the voicemail that the officer right. played. Right, exactly. The nothing exactly. about this is surprising. This is this is all that's left in their tiny brains. There's yeah. nothing left yeah. up there. But it made me sad because yeah. she's a Pennsylvania voter. Mm-hmm. And she could make her life better. Yes. And she's so focused on making sure that Everyone knows that John Fetterman is a socialist, Marxist, Marxist, baby killing Marxist, socialist, you know, and it just, that, what a waste. <laughs> Drift Glass, um, I understand that workers over 55 have been in the news this week. Yes, yes, we have. <laughs> um, yes, this we is, have. This is very quick, uh, but it bears mentioning uh, because our paper ran, uh, our local Republican rag, ran a half page, I think, I'm sure it was an Associated Press story since they do almost no original reporting here, mm-hmm. except for Karen. Um, <laughs> and it's like, after as we ease out of the pandemic, which we may or may not be doing, you know, workers over 55 are having an especially hard time getting back into the job market. And I'm like, well, fucking duh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, yours truly had a job before the Great Recession. Yeah, in 2008. Uh, I, had, I, had a, I had a great job. <laughs> Um, I, I worked really hard. I worked, I worked 100 hours a week. I was uh, in charge of uh, a vast span of control at the city of Chicago. My job was to literally, my job was to save the manufacturing base of the city of Chicago and a bunch of other shit that involved um, technology and networking and education. I had a tiny team and a huge span of control. And my boss thought I was doing a bang up job. Everyone who worked for me liked me as a boss. I was doing great work. And then I was laid off because they needed to make room in my department for people in other departments who were being laid off, but who were politically connected. Uh, give them a soft place to land. 
Um, so I walked out of there into the teeth of the Great Recession. I've said this long ago. Um, I, I found out I was going to be laid off. I think the same day Barack Obama uh, won the election. I thought it was Inauguration Day. Uh, inauguration Day was my last day. It was your last day. Yeah. So I found out by finding on the <laughs> on the Xerox machine, that's how old I am, um, a copy of the org chart with my name gone. Wow. Uh, that the consultant they hired for $120 an hour had forgotten because they were utterly useless. And then I was my last day was pretty much the same. It was the same week as Barack Obama was inaugurated. It was also the same week that uh, Rod Blagojevich was kicked out of office. And, oh, uh, that's right. Because they very, had to do that. Very eventful week. We um, podcasted about that. The timing did. of that was Rob Blagojevich is a crook who tried to sell Barack Obama's Senate seat. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama is about to become president of the United States. And Lincoln's 200th birthday right. is this month. What a country. <laughs> February, the yeah. next month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we, we talked about that. So, uh, and so I, I was twice cursed because I was laid off in the teeth of the Great Recession. I was over 55. Yeah. And most importantly, um, I was courting this beautiful woman from Springfield. Most importantly, more importantly than that was as a workforce professional, I knew what the stats were. And I knew the odds of me ever getting a job again were like nil, especially in this field with my area of specialization. There was just no way. I applied everywhere. There was nothing for me out there. And I watched millions of people like me just be dumped into the unemployment universe and there were stories of suicides going way up and drinking mm -hmm. going way up and mm -hmm. abuse, all the all the characteristic signs of a person whose life is spiraling out of control mm -hmm. because they they expect to be employed. They, they have been raised to believe they are their job um, yep. and their self-worth is entirely tied up with it as is their mortgage and a bunch of other stuff. And suddenly all that's taken away. Well, and they're career oriented in a way that they've been taught by the whole LinkedIn generation. Yes. That what you do is you go out and print 300 resumes at your own expense and right. you'll have a job in six months. Sure. It's it's easy. And and they have – and I was this way too um, uh, with a couple of s career dips that I'll talk about some other day. But, you know, I can always get a job. Mm -hmm. I'm smart mm -hmm. and I have credentials and I, I, I have lots of skill sets and I, and I couldn't. Suddenly yeah. it was, it was, there was no job for me anywhere out there. That's right. And I was not alone. There were, there were, and I always, I never took it personally mm -hmm. because there were millions of people like me. And I was the one of the thousands of people in the unemployment line with me who was carrying the knowledge that most of these people will never work again. Right. Ever. Because you have workforce development experience. Yeah. Deep, you know? deep workforce development experience. And so yeah. I was like, oh, I am so screwed. Hey, you know what I should do? I should try to monetize my blog. <laughs> Because I'm about to and, lose, and we and, should monetize our podcast. Yes, and, and we did that. And eventually, we did. And yeah. uh, I lost my condo. Um, I lost my savings. I lost my health care. I lost uh, everything you lose when you lose yeah. your job full time. I lost. I survived. I am happy with my life. I married a beautiful woman. I have wonderful stuff. Yeah, kids. and, I have and no we complaints. got married, and I lost my food stamps because your unemployment check was yeah. too high. So That's, that that amazed me. That just that sentence. I think of all the things that kind of shocked me uh -huh. about the past 30 years, in addition to Trump, of course, but the past 30 years of my life, the thing that shocked me was losing food stamps because your unemployment check was too high. It was just enough. It was just enough yeah. to tip us off. And, and the, the thing that there's a lot of fallout from that in terms of, of my, my interests, but one of which is how much it just fries me. When I hear people talk about, you know, those lazy people on unemployment, they just don't do, dude, be on unemployment in Illinois for, for a couple of months and tell me then how you feel about it. Yeah. I know you know a guy whose cousin knows a guy in California who's making $40,000 a month on unemployment because, and that's why we should shut the whole thing down. Paying people to sit on their asses, what's wrong with you? That is not how anything works. And it bothers me immensely that that mythology well, and no. and that gets carried, you know, that that jerk off from Home Depot, the ch former chairman of Home Depot who paid for Bush's second inaugural. Yeah. He was on with Elizabeth Warren this week saying, it's a shame that I'm getting four thousand dollars a month in Social Security. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm rich. I shouldn't get that money. We should be cutting that program back. Yeah. Well, I'm and Elizabeth of... Warren spoke to him like he was a third grader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You paid into Social Security mm -hmm. based on your income yes, all you these years. Yes, you did. And this is insurance for your old age. And you get to you get the benefit of your insurance 
oh, I'm 83 years old. I won the lottery. I get to do this. I get this. And he's arguing. He's trying, he thinks he's making a populist argument for yeah. cutting Social he's, Security as a he's program. Not. He's making an aristocratic argument he is. for being privileged. And why do poor, why does anyone need this? Yes. He's, um, as, as I think it was Anand said, it's, it's, uh, Mansplaining and rich splaining. Yeah, that's 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 just super <laughs> super special. So this is I'm not sure how long it's going to last. There are a lot more uh, help wanted signs around than than there used to be. Mm-hmm. A lot of those jobs don't pay very well. But if you're over a certain age and you lose your job, I, I know it's a protected category, and I know that there's ageism is real. But it's one of those things where you got to prove it to prove it. And there's really almost no way to do that unless you find someone writing up, we didn't hire so-and-so because she was 57 years old. We can't have that kind of thing around here. Right. Um, and then imagine being a woman. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, and being the and if you've got children at home Yeah. and I, it is true, it is absolutely true that HR people will follow you out to your car to find out if there's a car seat in the, in the van, absolutely. if you're driving a minivan, mm-hmm. they don't want you. Yeah. Uh, Oh, Even if your children are, have their own cars and are independent, they don't want you they, if you have children at home. The job yeah. of the person in HR is to not hire you. Not hire you and <laughs> find a reason not that. to hire you. Yeah. So I expect uh, a, a, a very large um, resemblance in the near future to what happened in 2008, 2009, after mm-hmm. the Great Recession, mm-hmm. during the Great Recession. The same kind of shock and panic and exhaustion and whatever and people taking jobs um, you know, at, at Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. who used to be managers someplace. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. that's really sad because I know intimately how devastating that can be uh, if you don't have a support system, especially, and how much, especially as a guy, as a male, white male American, mm-hmm. my self-worth was tied up in what I do for And a what living. your expectation was going yeah. to be. Not any, asking anyone to feel sorry for drift class. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I, hey, look, you should definitely send us money. I mean, we're, 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 let's get, let's be very clear about that. If you appreciate the show, yeah. we appreciate you we're, back. Yes. We are still like <laughs> on the meniscus of poverty. We're doing much better than we were. We have wonderful listeners who support us. I have readers who support us. You have crooks and liars uh, who who sort of throw you a, a cheese sandwich every now and then, which uh-huh. is great. <laughs> there, but it's a part time job. <laughs> yeah, but the truth of the matter is, um, I am happy in my life because of things that aren't related in any way to my job, and that I get to work with a woman I deeply love, talking about something we love that each other very is very important to me. Yeah. once a week to you guys. Yep. So you know, who's, who's got better listeners. than me? And we're never going to put this behind a paywall. No, or. Or do bonus content that you have to pay money for because I don't believe in that. So Good luck. Well, I, we keep threatening. You know, professional left after dark. After dark. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I don't but, have time for that. But let's move on to people who actually um, uh, shouldn't be working and are and get paid a lot of money <laughs> and to be um, idiots. <laughs> there's a confluence of two things happened this week that I don't think I, it didn't occur to me that they were. I would talk about them together, but they really are related. Um. First, I want to talk about Margaret Sullivan, uh, who writes for the Washington Post and is a national treasure. There, I said it. She's a national treasure. So hate me all you want. Um, and I read her columns and she's very good. And and I read her column today and all I felt was exhaustion, honestly. Um, her column is entitled, Our Democracy is Under Attack. Washington journalists must stop covering it like politics as usual. Uh, it's accurate and it's sobering and it's chilling and it feels like I might have pulled it out of my own archive 16 years ago uh, because nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Uh, mine is, of course, all my swears and my verbal curl cues and things like that. It's a much more serious and sober article. But um, it's another one of the tens of thousands of urgent but ultimately impotent editorials that we've all read. And I've written a whole bunch of them. I've written thousands of them uh, over the decades pleading with journalism to police itself. And if they won't police themselves, then please someone up the food chain, stop writing both sides do it bullshit. You're Mm -hmm. killing us with this stuff. You're enabling the GOP. You're paving the road down which Trump rolled into the White House and and, and, and that the GOP is using to to smash this country to bits. This is very much on you and you got to stop it. Uh, Now, Ms. Sullivan correctly cites Norman Ornstein and Thomas Mann from back in the dark ages of 2012. I'm reading a quote Mm -hmm. now. Um, And she goes on that nearly a decade later, the derangement of the GOP has only gotten worse. The derangement part is mine. The decade later is hers. 
which is true, but it's also true that a decade before Mann and Ornstein wrote their book, the left was talking about exactly this thing every fucking day. Yep. And nobody, nobody wanted to hear it because it was the only place for incompetent hacks to hide. Mm-hmm. Uh, bless her heart. She, she names and shames the publications. She talks about CNN doing this and Politico doing that and Politico Playbook. And she even names the Washington Post. But she doesn't name the people who wrote those articles, uh, which I did in my post over at <laughs> driftclassblogspot.com. You make sure you name names. <laughs> and in at least one case, you had to drill through a tweet and then do a screenshot and then search for a phrase and find out what was going on in the Politico Playbook. And you find out it's, it's Ryan Lizza and a bunch of his people. Um, but all that told me something I already knew, which was despite a decade of liberal bloggers um, banging away on this topic and another decade of people who are much more respectable than us, <laughs> of Ornstein and Mann and Sullivan and others like her, uh, Jay Rosen, for example, um, banging away on exactly the same thing, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing, ha- nothing can touch them, which tells me one thing, that all these well-known people or people who are looking to make a name for themselves in journalism who write this shit every day have a very accurate professional radar. And that yeah. radar tells them that the safest and most reliable course to career success is the both sides do it bullshit. And this will never fucking end. Never. It is. It, we're stuck with it. As long well, as they it, think they're unifying the country by saying that. No, they don't. I, I really don't believe that anymore. I don't believe that you anymore. Don't? No, I think that they are just cowardly hacks who are taking cues from those above them. Okay. Who, and who don't want the mob to come to their house and kick their door in. Who okay. don't want to be called liberal. Yep. Oh, on yeah. on tele, they call us liberal on Fox. Quick, get Hugh Hewitt in here to prove yeah, we're not liberal. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's they're yeah. such fucking cowards. They're yeah. so fucking afraid of being called lefty by some hack on the right that they will do anything to th- throw their lunch money at these people. <laughs> Say please, which does nothing but appease them. And that leads me to Chuck Todd, uh, who is, the, as you know, is the host of Meet the Press. Um, he shouldn't be. Uh, there shouldn't actually be a Meet the Press. Um, <laughs> there should there should barely be an MSN. It's MS- not a Meet the Press. It's Meet the Republicans. It really is. Yeah. It really is. And um, But Chuck Todd was, if you didn't know anything about Chuck Todd, if you were literally landed here yesterday or this week, uh, you'd be like, wow, this Chuck Todd, got, this Todd guy's got it going on, man. He's sitting <laughs> in the verge saying, and I'm quoting now, I don't ever want to be in the access game. And yet the access game is paying a lot of bills in the social media influencer and cable news space. And like, okay. And then people who have a memory remember him back in 2014 saying, I'm definitely in the access game. Mm -hmm. And um, back a radio interview when he was on a a, a show called The Moment with Brian Koppelman, who went, he went into great detail. By the way, thank, thank you once again, Walt, for pointing this out to me back in 2015, Chuck Todd goes into enormous detail about, yeah, we know these people are crazy. We know they're lying to us, but we don't tell anybody because we're not supposed to do that. You can't tell people that the so-and-so center is lying. This all, he does this every two or three years. A lot he of people does. on Twitter pointed out, you know, every two or three years he comes out and has this honest moment of, you know, we cannot tell the truth on Meet the Press because then Republicans won't come on our show. And well, we and are then, slaves to the bookers. And then he wrings his hand. And now mm-hmm. I'm quoting from the Verge article. Uh, cause he goes through some both sides bullshit cause he does both sides bullshit. Cause that's what he does mm-hmm. about, about party X doing this and both sides doing that. Cause he's, he's got, I swear he's got a tiny explosive device wired into his brain mm-hmm. that, and someone at back at NBC will push a button if he doesn't say both sides do it every few minutes. Mm-hmm. So, but he, he starts whining about his colleagues, his profession, um, When did we let Republican critics get in our heads, man? (laughs) And Roger Ailes built this entire empire based on the premise that he created during the Nixon era of hating the media. We shouldn't have accepted the premise that there was a liberal bias. We should have fought back better. He's saying all this in 2021, this fucking week. Mm -hmm. And we end up with this both sides trope. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, if you landed here yesterday and you thought Chuck Todd was a guy, except Chuck Todd said exactly the same shit back in 2019. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, And there's a wonderful article uh, in Press Think called uh, The Christmas Eve Confessions of Chuck Todd, where he lets wring his hands about, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then before that, in 2018, there's Chuck Todd in the Atlantic going, it's time for the press to stop complaining and start fighting back. Yeah. And this is all performative. It's Mm -hmm, all, mm -hmm. he's never going to change. And here's the dirty secret, because before Chuck Todd, it wasn't 
um, Tim Russert. Before Chuck Todd, it was David Gregory. David Gregory. Everybody forgets about Everybody David Gregory. Everybody forgets David Gregory. And David Gregory was fucking awful in exactly the same way Chuck mm-hmm. Todd is awful. Mm-hmm. He rolled over for Republican lies. He never held him accountable. Mm-hmm. Everything was both sides do it. And for six fucking years, that was the that was what was going on on Meet the Press. Mm-hmm. And they didn't fire the, 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 the suits at Comcast, MSNBC, didn't fire David Gregory because he was a hack. They fired him because his ratings were bad. And then they hired someone who was exactly like him, somebody who they wanted David Gregory without the David Gregory. So they got mm-hmm. Chuck Todd, who's mm-hmm. been doing the same shit for, for his tenure there. So this idea that this is all a surprise to him and, oh, my God, journalism, oh, my God, I have to stop doing this, is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Because they hired him because he's a hack. Exactly. They hired him because he will sit in that chair and sweat and shit and himself. say what he's supposed to say. That's exactly yep. right. So yep. the idea that any of this is going to change. And I went way back to oh, 2011 <laughs> and pulled a long stretch of, of David Gregory as host of Meet the Press and Chuck Todd as a guest on Meet the Press <laughs> being just just the worst people imaginable. This is this is what you, you pay for out there in yes. podcast land. Well, this, this is, was this is the drift glass work that he does tirelessly. I and this was I, I <laughs> at this point in 2011, I was like several hundred episodes on my blog of Sunday morning coming down, which yes, I used to right. document this shit. I just right. gave up because they're never going to change. I'm going to keep writing about it. And you know what? Margaret Sullivan should keep writing articles like this. I respect her for doing it. She's yep. excellent. But the idea that that holding them accountable from the outside is going to change anything is insane. But Drift Glass, the fact that Ornstein and Mann were utterly blackballed. Yes. When we knew yep. that their article, their op-ed in the Washington Post was the most read thing in the entire city of Washington, in that town, in this yep. town, they call it this town. Everyone was reading it and yeah. everyone was talking about it over drinks and no one was saying anything about it on the air is the complete and utter indictment of yeah. the Washington well, press corps. It, that means the word went out. Nobody booked these people. Yep. Nobody book them. We are and, not going to talk. And and it went out from the suits upstairs. Republican congressmen weren't telling people not no. to have them on. No. It was the suits upstairs saying we cannot afford to have the truth spoken on the airwaves. And, and here's the thing. Ornstein and Mann weren't dirty, disreputable liberal bloggers. They weren't Daily Coast columnists. No, who, were, who were already <laughs> exiled for talking talking the truth. For saying fuck Bush door, every week. And right. saying fuck Harold Ford Jr. You mean Harold Fraud Jr., right? <laughs> you know, that was our signature. And, and, and somebody has to do it, so we did it. Um, these were insiders. These were people who were on these shows all the time. They, yeah. were, they were booked constantly. And they were these sober, center... They were Enterprise Institute. Yeah. I mean, it was not... They were Beltway people, yes. Uh, but they, but they were center, serious, sober. They never flew off the handle. They were always there for a considered, thoughtful opinion about shit. And then they come up with this, like, "Oh no, you're gone now. Yeah. You're gone now. We're not talking to you anymore." And it took quite a but bit it's of because doing. they told the truth. Yeah. So the idea that anything—that's why that the people who are anxious to get past Trump are not anxious to get past. Trump to get to the truth. They're anxious to get back to the safe panic room right. of both sides both do it. Both sides do it. Because that's all they know how to do. That's so what that they, they were... can have 51 seats in the Senate in 2022. That's right. That's right. That's and all then Mitch McConnell's about. back to blocking judges. Mm-hmm. All right. we uh, Drift Glass, you have something here about the week you think you're going to think the New York Times pitch bot made this up, but he didn't award. No, no he didn't. <laughs> I'm going to read this. Oh, please. Please, please. Uh, before the Capitol riot, Pauline Bauer's neighbors in rural Pennsylvania knew her for her restaurant's pizza and ice cream. Right there. That's yep. got to be made up, right? That's in this Ohio diner, <laughs> right? Got to be made diner, up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I went to high school in rural Pennsylvania. Yes, you did. Um, after her arrest on riot-related charges <laughs> related to January 6th, she became a target for stranger scorn and a punchline for a late night talk show. Oh, we should be clear. You're reading an Associated Press story on this. Okay, this is AP, right. Yeah. Bauer tries to shrug off the scorn from strangers, but acknowledges her actions have angered some in her community. Some people didn't like the fact that I became political, uh-huh. she said during a break in dinner service at her restaurant called Bob's Trading Post. Some people call it becoming political. Some people call it becoming a traitor. Right. But, you know, hey. <laughs> Potato, Even potato. so, some in Kane, Pennsylvania, have stood by Bauer, who insists her actions haven't cost her any friendships or harmed her business. 
On a recent Wednesday evening, tables at her restaurant were filled by her regular customers. Quote, she's a human being who stood up for her rights. She should have a right to stand up for what she believes in, said Glenn Robinson, 68. We know what party and what race he is. Yes, we do. Yes. And he's probably a retired state worker. Okay. She became an outspoken critic of COVID-19 lockdown measures that cost her business and drove a wedge between neighbors who clashed on social media. She complained about a mask mandate during a school board meeting two weeks before her arrest. The Kane Republican newspaper reported. Last year, as her business suffered through the pandemic, Bauer also began to embrace an ideology that appears to comport with the sovereign citizen extremist movement's belief that the U.S. government is illegitimate. Bauer has told the court, by the way, Mm -hmm. that she is of the sovereign people, not a sovereign citizen. She refers to herself as Pauline from the House of Bauer. That sounds like a little bit of Game of Thrones. That sounds a lot like Game of Thrones. Sovereign citizen movement. And you can watch in very short uh, uh, clips, of just verbal clips, her descent into madness. Yeah. And, And her poor lawyer who, yeah. whether he's court appointed or not, is having a real tough time because she will not sign any agreements with the court to get out of jail. Oh, because and she, she doesn't recognize. She will recognize that her lawyer is legitimate. Right. I don't recognize your business card, sir, I believe yeah. is a quote from the article as well. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. But she has, you, you can sit down uh, at an Ohio diner or a Pennsylvania diner or an Illinois diner with these people any day. An of the Illinois week. diner two blocks from our house. Yep. yep. <laughs> yep. And you can Literally. talk to them any day of the week yes. and you're going to hear yep. the same shit. Yep. And and so it's not a random occurring event. The mm-hmm. thing all of these places have in common is that Fox News plays all the time. All Hate day radio long. plays all the time. And has been doing that for decades. And these people have grown up in this cesspool of Republican racism and rage and paranoia and stupidity while the mainstream press on the coast pretended it wasn't happening and now it's and, here and really laura ingram i think is the worst yes she she is the one calling these police officers crisis actors and giving them acting awards this week and constantly saying you know don't trust the experts right when she's a lawyer who uses an expert for her hair her lighting her microphone her mm-hmm. child care her gardening her auto repair her dentistry all of it. And she's vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know she is. They so all, this is the biggest hypocrisy there is. And she thinks her listeners and viewers are idiots. And and you know what? They are. <laughs> um, and now we got to we gotta move on. Okay, well, uh, let's talk about a news roundup, shall we? News I'm gonna roundup. Talk about, the Bidening continues uh, from the Washington Post. After you. The U.S. economy grew 6.5% between April and June, marking full recovery from the pandemic. For the first time, economic output eclipsed its pre-pandemic high after adjusting for inflation. The Wall Street Journal reported exactly the same story by grudgingly admitting that things were looking better, but that by next quarter, they might suck. Who who owns the Wall Street Journal again? (laughs) Oh, that's right. It's Rupert Murdoch. Uh, The Biden White House and a bipartisan group of senators agreed this week on a far-reaching $1 trillion infrastructure bill a deal which Trump tried and failed to blow up from his stink hole at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, from his (laughs) microblog. Nobody reads my blog! (laughs) According to a fact sheet released Wednesday afternoon by the White House, the results would bring another $500 billion in new federal money for roads, bridges, rail, transit, water, and other physical infrastructure programs, which, you know, is all all good news. Of course, I think it should be five times that big, but that's what the... That's what the reconciliation bill is going to hopefully do. That's correct. Do. And mm-hmm. Pramila Jayapal is being the hard-ass Democrat. You yeah. want a goddamn Democrat? You got one in the yeah. House. Yes, you it's do. It's not Nancy Pelosi. It's Pramila Jayapal. And she will vote no mm-hmm. on an infrastructure bill if she doesn't get what she wants. Yeah. And her which caucus is what, will vote with her. Which is what you're supposed to do. You're yep. supposed to stick up for your constituents. And they're afraid of her in the Senate. The white guy, the old white guys <laughs> in the Senate are afraid of Pramila. Yeah. Yeah. Who does not, uh, you know, sh- she's there to stop the nonsense. Mm-hmm. She really is. Fuck around, find out. Fuck around, find out is right. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, President Biden announced a vaccination requirement for all federal government employees and contractors. And mm-hmm. I want to applaud the military and ex-military people on Twitter mm-hmm. who have have gone on and testified to what boot camp is like uh-huh. and how many shots they got put in their bodies the uh-huh. first three days. Yep. And nobody asked them, would you like to know what's in this vaccination that we're mm-hmm. going to give you? Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> drop your pants and bend over. Yeah. What? Yeah, no. Punk. No. Yep. GI stands for government issue. Yeah, so, and that's what you are. And uh-huh. we get to put whatever, whatever immunizations in you that we think you should have. Uh, six Michigan Republican commissioners who voted to pay themselves bonuses out of their share of the COVID relief funds were now forced to pay the money back. Wah, we didn't wah. know. We didn't know. <laughs> we thought, hey, money's money and we're hardworking people. And uh, Shut up. President Biden said the long-term effects of COVID-19 can be considered a disability. Mm-hmm. Under federal civil rights laws. Think about that. You're going to be disabled by this. Yeah. Thanks to your Republican family and friends. Uh, Nancy Pelosi said Kevin McCarthy is a moron for opposing a mask mandate in the House. And the Beltway media promptly lost its collective mind. And then she said, well, I'm not saying he's not a moron. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Well, what is it LBJ said about calling calling someone a pig fucker? I don't. I don't know if it's true or not. I just want to hear him deny it. <laughs> That's right. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm not a moron. <laughs> I, I'm not a pig fucker. How dare you call me? Please keep saying big fucker, sir. Please keep saying that <laughs> as many times as possible. Four police officers delivered emotional testimony on Tuesday during the first hearing of the House Select Committee on the January 6th insurrection. The officers recounted the physical and verbal abuse they endured defending the U.S. Capitol on January 6th from a mob of Trump supporters. They were immediately mocked and slandered by right-wing media. Yep, that's what they do. This is from Talking Points Memo. The next story is the public face of the Arizona audit plans to quit because the auditors won't let him see what they're doing. Uh, The former Arizona Secretary of State says he has been locked out of the audit. The face of the Arizona Senate's audit of Maricopa County's 2020 election results is stepping down saying because he's been shut out of the process and that he won't put a rubber stamp on a report whose underlying data he hasn't seen. Ken Bennett, who Arizona Republican Senate president picked as the legislator's liaison to the private contracted audit, was barred from the audit site a few days ago after sharing some preliminary data with an outside group that tried to confirm the audit's legitimacy. Fox and Friends thinks violent crime is up because too many people smoke and weed and having psychotic breaks. Yeah, I think there's a lot of projection going on about psychotic <laughs> breaks and being <laughs> high all the time. Yeah. Uh, the universally loathed Republican Representative Paul Gosar of Arizona is offering an amendment to defund the police. Way to go, Paul. Uh, it takes the form of an add-on to the House spending bill to withhold funding from U.S. Capitol Police until more surveillance video from Capitol Grounds is released to the public. You know, the stuff that shows that it was all FBI, undercover people, and BLM. Mm-hmm. He wants that video released. Mm-hmm. All Gosar does. I'm sorry, but the Arizona audit people have it, and you can't look at yeah, it. Sorry. Take it up with your friends down the block in the crazy house. <laughs> house Republican Lauren Boebert walked onto the House floor without a mask and threw a mask back at a staffer who offered one to her, CNN reports. Masks are once again required on the House floor. And Marge Green, you might know her as Marjorie Taylor Green, called on her- You also might know her as Klan mom. Yeah. Oh, she's, yeah, well, she's trying to be the worst. She's working real hard at it. She called on her supporters to exercise their, quote, Second Amendment rights on vaccine door knockers from Biden's, quote, police state, unquote. That is she also we we should add to this. We're recording this on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh she and her three G's, the four yeah. G's, Gosar, Green, Gates, and don't forget Louis Gomert. Yes, Gomert. Don't forget they, Gomert. They wanted to uh raid the DC jail where some of the January sixth insurrectionists are housed. Yeah. Yeah. To check on their conditions. Hello. They didn't have an appointment and they aren't related to any of the prisoners. So um and had made no arrangements to do this. They just walked in. And this is the point at which I embarrass myself by doing a Bane voice. Mm-hmm. You are free of those heroes languishing in the Blackgate prison. 
I, I'm available for parties and voiceover work. <laughs> bar mitzvahs. Yeah. Bar mitzvahs. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she wanted to speak to the supervisor of the jail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They they simply wouldn't let these folks in. And and Louis Gomert actually tried to argue that because he has security clearance, that he should be allowed to visit the jail. Yes. And then Batman came to the drive through window and said, <laughs> This is a this is a KFC drive up, asshole. Go away. <laughs> I mean I mean this this really is up there with what's her name? Um Laura Loomer. Chaining oh, yeah. herself to the door of to Twitter. To the door of Twitter. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is like, please pay attention to me because Matt Gates is probably going to jail. Yeah. And Marge Green may very well be losing her job in the near future or certainly, you know, be shackled to something with a duct tape over her mouth. Um, and they are desperate. For I mean, attention. All of their, their, their coast to coast rally was a bust, was a failure. They lost all their venues in California when they went there. They're well, just, and Gates is spending all of her money. She's yeah. the f- number one fundraiser on the right and on the Republican side mm-hmm. uh, with all her emails. And she's got an email list, you know, a mile long. And so uh, Gates hooked his wagon to her star yeah. and spent all her money. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that happened this week is they tried to do a press conference on the day that the police were testifying. Oh, yeah. And you got to love those protesters who I had do. a whistle under their mask uh-huh. and had signs that said, rapists and traitors sit down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because what is what is following them is their reputations. And they have very bad reputations. And you can point that out to them and they run away. I, I, I desperately want to see a six part uh, Netflix series uh, with Gates and green as roommates <laughs> and her looking at her credit card bill, which is like 40 pages long going <laughs> and he's passed out on the couch yep. with a big bowl of, of fruit loops. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what the fuck is this on my credit card? <laughs> How much room service did you order while we were in California? Oh yeah. We had to rent a van and a bunch of <laughs> venues and the guy at the bar wouldn't take a check. And so, you know, we had to do shit cause freedom. <laughs> And I, I just, you know, the sequel to Alpha House is gonna be is gonna be lit. By lit, the way, baby. we also do screenwriting, so give us a call. Speaking of Republicans in the same party, but a slightly different flavor, the a more respectable, uh, soft spoken Republican, uh, Rodney Davis. He's our congressman. Um, he's our for congressman. Now. Yes, uh, for, for the time being. Rodney, but Rodney Davis, Davis was going to be one of the five Republicans that Kevin McCarthy put on yes. the one six commission. With Jim Jordan. Yes. And and he was, you know, one of the whitest of the white boys who was going to be on, on the Republican. And he still could be. The mm-hmm. thing is, Nancy Pelosi has no objection to Rodney Davis being well, on that's the, the thing. commission. He, he, he appeared at the Kevin McCarthy press conference. It was his typical empty suit, pathetic self. Mm-hmm. And the other mopes were there too. And they were all waving notes around. One of them was wearing a binder complaining that because Nancy Pelosi won't let these two assholes sit on the committee. Our vital questions... Uh, will will never be answered. And as friend of the pod, Hal Sparks pointed out, hey, dummy, your invitation is still open. You could go there right now. They will seat you right now. The reason you're not on the committee is because your leader, Kevin McCarthy, yanked you off out of spite and because he thinks you're an idiot. <laughs> he, don't thinks you're, he thinks you're unreliable. He wants Jim Jordan there to do what you guys were supposed to do. Act the clown, throw shit on the wall, disrupt everything. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't trust that you know how to do that. So Kevin McCarthy must think you guys are complete morons and incapable of asking questions. So take it up with Kevin and leave us the fuck out of it. Yep. Yep. Um, as the COVID Delta variant spikes in Missouri, the St. Louis County Council voted to end their mask mandates to the cheers of the crowd. And the mob that was there. Yeah. I really want to know how many of them are on statin drugs. Uh, Jesus. I want to know Medicare how funded statin drugs from Run. their doctor that they take every day because they want their heart to be healthy. Right. And then that the, that is balanced out by the meth that they're picking <laughs> up in the in the garage down the block. And they I all don't know think the... they're all on meth, I th- but I do think that they very very carefully choose mm-hmm. which facts to insert into their brain and which to leave out. Oh, yes they do. And this is just a general interest thing that mm-hmm. After 10 years on the market with no takers, the State Journal Register downtown office building, that's our local paper, 
will now be auctioned off in September because there is nobody left in that building. Auctioned mm-hmm. off like a Donald Trump helicopter. Yeah. In the past, it's been listed for sale between $1.75 million and $2.9 million. The bidding will now start at $400,000. The building has been the last 10 years on the market with no takers. That's It's a, it's a beautiful building, too. It is. It is. It, it, I've been in there many, many times. I've been in there for meetings several times. Uh, it is located like across the street from downtown, which is a pretty good location. It has a parking lot. I'm not the real estate agent. I'm just saying this is what's happened to uh, newspapers all over the country. Mm-hmm. This was like the second largest newspaper in Illinois at one time. Mm-hmm. And it has, mm-hmm. it has, they got rid we've said this before, it got rid of all their photographers, but one, the good ones are all gone, got rid of their editors, got rid of their reporters. It's now just rip and read shit from the AP and a so bunch of stuff impressed. from Rockford for some reason. Because that's where they're actually they're located in Rockford now, so we get a lot of or that's we get a lot of information, a lot of stories about Rockford, which is which, way north of us. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is we don't care about as you do. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Ms. Hazel. Ms. Hazel not only eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. She has the freshly poured song sung to her each morning by her human Tom. Really? Who writes to us and says, I have to add that I have been a fan and supporter of the podcast for many years now. And even while I was laid off last year, I proudly made my monthly payments to Patreon. Thank you so much, Tom. I love to share your show on Facebook and Twitter each week and chuckle every time. And remind people it's not always safe for work or for little ears. No. I also have to add that my brother has been a mail carrier for almost 30 years now. Awesome. That's awesome. So, yes, go Postal Unions. Hell yeah. My mom was a nurse and my dad was a teacher. And both were proud union members. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I give my permission to use my letter on the air. And I look forward to many more years of the best pro left podcast on the interwebs. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. And thank, thank you, you Tom. for sending in Ms. Hazel. Mm-hmm. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Ms. Hazel. She's a lovely kitty at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. What do we say? Go Go Postal postal Unions. Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag fire to joy. Get him out of there. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, please buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We've got Patreon, PayPal, Buy Me a Coffee, merch. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are old enough to remember when Republicans swore on their granny's grave that their tax cuts for billionaires would lead to a 4% rate of growth, and their grannies went to hell. Thank you, Drift Glass. My pleasure, Blue Gal. I love you. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.